It's Friday, October 29th, and the time for your body list today morning is a bit. Personal behaviors are driving the current COVID-19 situation in Barbados and globally. That's according to Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Best, who believes that the impact of the pandemic could be lowered if persons adhered to protocols and got vaccinated. Dr. Best was speaking on Thursday during one of the COVID-19 series organized by COVID-19 Public Advisor David Ellis. So we are trying, we are trying to be as strategic as possible. Every single day we're coming up with different strategies. We're, we're, we're looking to strengthen the resources that are already out there. We're looking to implement newer initiatives. We're trying to be as innovative as possible. But it is very difficult. I will stress again, what we do know is that personal behaviors are driving this epidemic in Barbados. This is driving the pandemic globally. So if more people adhere adhere to the public health and social measures, such as physical distancing, such as, as hand hygiene, right? Um, and by physical distancing, I mean not gathering, okay? If more people got vaccinated, we can get to the end of this. The impact of COVID would be lower. Commercial banks in Barbados are in agreement with the central bank's decision to cap the charge for ATM transactions. In fact, President of the Barbados Bankers Association, Anthony Clerk, said the decision to implement a standardized fee of $3 for ATM transactions was suggested by officials of commercial banks during a meeting with officials from the central bank. The change takes effect from November 1st. Clerk tells Barbados today while the move might affect the bottom line for some banks, they agreed it was necessary at this time. Out of discussions between the banks and the central bank, so we, we agreed to that. So that was nothing that we were forced to do. It was coming out, it came out of, of, of discussions between banks and the central bank. Meanwhile, opposition leader Bishop Joseph Averly said he was pleased with the development. He said for too long, commercial banks had been taking advantage of Barbadians. I recall for a full way back, heritage, because the banks are overcharging the poor people of Barbados in several respects. I think that this represents a step in the right direction. It does not carry you altogether where I would like to see us go with respect to uh, the influence that can be exerted over the banking sector with respect to those charges, whether they were the company charges or charges to the ATM. So I, I applaud the central bank for making the move. It's not incoming. Uh, but I only see it as a step in the right direction and not the completion of a journey. Constituents of St. Michael North react to the MP's announcement that he was not contesting the next general election. On Wednesday, Ronald Topping said that he was bowing out of active politics and named the current Barbados Labour Party branch president, Davidson Ishmael, as his successor. Some constituents believe the long-standing parliamentary representative had paid his dues. Here's what they had to say. For me, I think it's a good idea because I, think, I believe it's time to let the youth step in and make certain changes because we need it right now. We need a change, uh, we need development, and we need evolution. So I believe the youth is the future and you should take that and carry that on. It's neither here nor there for me. Um, I try to support who I think will make a difference and make a change. I am not a staunch D nor a staunch B. So whoever is there that I believe would effect change, I am willing to support. Okay. So it's, it's, not, it's neither here nor there for me. I believe that his heart might be in the right place. I believe that some areas are targeted more than others. Um, some areas get more of the benefits than others, but I believe his heart is in the right place. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. 
I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The developments in the region, statistics show that the uptake of second doses in Guyana is not where it should be. In fact, Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony revealed that over 139,000 people are yet to return for the second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. We get more in this report from News Source Guyana. Faced with the expiry dates for thousands of second-dose vaccine shots fast approaching, the Ministry of Health is appealing to persons who have already been administered a first dose of one of the COVID-19 vaccines to return for their second-dose shots. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony revealed today that there are over 139,000 persons who are still to return for their second-dose vaccine shots to be fully vaccinated. He reminded that a person can only be considered to be fully vaccinated after receiving both doses of the COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Anthony said Region 4 is the only region where more than 50% of those given the first dose have returned for their second dose. So when you look at how much person got their first dose and how much got their second dose, there's a difference of 139,000 people. So there's still a lot of people who need to come back to get their second dose vaccine. The health minister also explained that there is a large batch of vaccines that will expire at the end of November. And the Ministry of Health is therefore hoping that persons will return for their second dose shots. While more than 70% of Ghana's adult population has received the first dose of one of the vaccines, only 47% overall have returned for the second dose to be considered fully vaccinated. And finally... A new report released by the United Nations Development Programme ahead of the upcoming COP26 climate negotiations in Glasgow next week shows that vulnerable countries are stepping up amidst a slow response from some of the biggest emitters on the climate crisis. Harry's Akmin Steiner, the UNDP administrator, who launched the report. The first piece of good news that I think they've ever fought, notwithstanding that in many respects the world is behind in terms of acting on climate change, is that 178 nations have submitted their NDCs. In fact, the numbers are still going up, and as of the cutoff date, which was um, about 10 days ago, 90% of the world's nations actually have committed and upheld their commitment to the Paris Agreement and have submitted these NDCs. On the fact that some of the most vulnerable and poorest countries are in fact the trailblazers in terms of these NDCs. On the fact that some of the most vulnerable and poorest countries are in fact the trailblazers in terms of these NDCs, meaning raising the level of ambition in acting on climate change, on mitigation and adaptation. And with the G20 summit just a couple of days uh, away, it is also interesting to observe that in the G20 context, um, not all countries have first of all submitted NDCs by the cover of date. In fact, we have just seen uh, Saudi Arabia and China submit and Australia resubmit an NDC. So those numbers are not yet reflected in the analysis because they were after the cover of date, but that's a good signal. Let us see whether they actually have raised their ambition levels. But the G20 clearly accounting for three quarters of greenhouse gas emissions, 80% of global GDP is a central part of making qualitatively these NPCs really deliver. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.